Good day, everybody. I hope you're all having a great day so far. When the market starts trending down, the opportunity to make money can get a little harder. If you're not comfortable trading options and you don't like the potentially unlimited risk when you short individual stocks, a good alternative could be inverse ETFs or inverse exchange traded funds. In this video, I'm going to show you my favorite ones that I like to use in a down market as well as my strategy on how I like to trade them. If you are new to my channel, I like to find short-term and long-term trading and investing opportunities in typically lower-priced stocks. I like to find undervalued, underappreciated stocks with high growth potential and talk about all other things finance-related as well. If that's something that interests you, please subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any future trading and investing ideas. And also, I am not a financial advisor, so please do all of your own research before investing in any of these stocks. First, I want to go over exactly what an ETF is in case you are new to investing or have never used them before. An exchange-traded fund or ETF is a type of security that involves a collection of securities such as stocks that often tracks an underlying index. Although they can invest in a number of industry sectors or use various strategies, ETFs are in many ways similar to mutual funds. However, they are listed on exchanges and ETF shares trade throughout the day just like an ordinary stock. Now, ETF share prices fluctuate all day as the ETF is bought and sold. This is different from mutual funds that only trade once a day after the market closes. ETFs can contain all types of investments, including stocks, commodities, bonds. Some offer U.S.-only holdings, while others are international. ETFs provide lower average costs since it would be expensive for investors to buy all the stocks held in ETF portfolio individually. Investors only need to execute one transaction to buy and one transaction to sell. An ETF's expense ratio is the cost to operate and manage the fund. ETFs typically have low expenses since they track an index. For example, if an ETF tracks the S&P 500 index, it might contain all 500 stocks from the S&P, making it a passively managed fund and less time intensive. However, not all ETFs track an index in a passive manner. Okay, the pros to ETFs are you have access to many stocks across various industries, most have low expense ratios, and you get risk management through diversification. Now, most ETFs that exist focus on targeted industries. But the cons are some actively managed ETFs do have higher fees, single industry focused ETFs limit your diversification, and some have a lack of liquidity that can hinder transactions. Now in this video, I'm going to talk about a strategy that I use to trade inverted ETFs or inverse ETFs, or I've heard them called short ETFs or even bear ETFs. Now, an inverse ETF is an exchange-traded fund constructed by using various derivatives to profit from a decline in the value of an underlying benchmark. Inverse ETFs allow investors to make money when the market or the underlying index declines, but without having to sell anything short. Now, a key advantage to using inverted ETFs versus short selling is that they don't require the investor to hold a margin account, as would be the case for investors looking to enter into short positions. And also, inverse ETFs can help investors hedge their investment portfolio, and there are multiple inverse ETFs for many of the major market indices. Now, the cons are inverted ETFs can lead to losses quickly if the investor has bet wrong on the market's direction, and inverse ETFs held for more than one day also can lead to losses. There are also higher fees that exist with inverted ETFs versus traditional ETFs. Because of the expenses, there's something that's called ETF decay, and I'll show you what that looks like in the charts in a few minutes. But basically, it's when you hold one of these ETFs for periods longer than a single day, the fund will lose money if the index's performance is flat, and it's even possible that the fund will lose money if the index performance has increased. All right, explaining that took a little longer than I hoped it would. I apologize if I put you to sleep, but let's get right into the strategy. Right here, I have the QID up, and that is the ultra short inverted fund that follows the NASDAQ. Now, what my strategy that I like to use is I like to buy one of these inverted ETFs. Now, I'm going to go over the six that I like the most, but we'll start with the QID right now. When the price breaks above this white line and this white line is the 13 period exponential moving average i typically like to use the eight period exponential moving average 
But in, in the case of inverted ETFs, I like to use a longer moving average because it helps filter out some of the false signals. And the market tends to trend up. So that means these inverted ETFs will tend to trend down. So if you're buying them, most of the time, if you're holding it, you are going to be losing money. So you don't want to be in these inverted ETFs unless you are very sure or at least pretty sure that the market is going to go down so when price breaks above this white line that's when i like to enter if it's held above it for five more or five or more consecutive days and a lot of times right around that fifth day you'll kind of get a pullback to that moving average so it'll make it a little bit easier for you to enter but getting out, you just want to get out when price is far away from that 13 period exponential moving average. You never know how far it's going to go. But you have to be rather nimble when you get in these inverted ETFs, especially when you're buying them to go up because they don't trend up a lot of the time. But this is a great instrument to use if you want to help if you want to hedge your portfolio when the market is going down. All right, well, if I zoom in to the current price action of the last couple of weeks, we can see that the QID is hanging around in this consolidation. And I haven't bought any inverted ETFs yet. The QID is the one that I am looking at right now, but I don't want to be a buyer unless it breaks above this level. Breaks above that level, I think I'm going to start a position in the QID to hedge my portfolio. I like to buy some of these when the market starts going down because I have some long-term holds that I don't want to sell no matter what. So I like to get in one of these inverted ETFs just to make some money on the downside and hedge my longs. Let me get rid of this, these boxes. Let me back out of the chart and I will show you what ETF decay looks like. Let me go to the weekly chart. If you go all the way back to 2008, you can see that this ultra short ETF has just been trending down ever since because not only has the market been in an uptrend pretty much since 09, but the expenses that this fund incurs continues to drag down its performance. So you never want to hold these things very long at all. You want to be in these let me go back to the daily chart. You want to be in these when they break above this white line and you want to be out of them when they break below it. You don't want no part of these things when the market is going up because it will drain your account. If it gets down into this level and there's probably still going to be some negative news about the market in the news, there's going to be a lot of negative bias. You don't want to hold this thinking that, oh, we you know it's probably going to turn around and, and, and the market's going to go back down in this inverted fund is going to go up. You want to be out of it. You don't want to hold these things any longer than you have to. This is a very short-term hold only to hedge your portfolio for when the market starts going down. All right, well, that is the strategy in a nutshell. Um, it's very easy to follow. Uh, you just don't want, you just have to follow it to a T because you don't want to get stuck in one of these when they are below the white line because that will drain your account. One other thing I forgot to add is I like ETFs and inverted ETFs that trade at least a million shares a day. It, I tend to find that the spreads are a little too wide for my liking when I get into ETFs that are more thinly traded than that. But let's get right to the other ETFs that I like the other inverted ETFs that is next one is going to be the SDS which is the ultra short S&P 500 fund now this one is just a little bit um, more volatile than the QID you can see this one gapped up over $20 and didn't stop until it got to a high of over $44 this was the move back in March but if I zoom in a little closer we can see this one is hanging around in that same type of consolidation like the QID. So I wouldn't be a buyer of this one until it broke into this range. But I got a sneaky suspicion that the market is going to head higher from here. So it wouldn't surprise me one bit if it does 
uh, break below this white line and the market starts trending higher, which of course will make these trend lower. Get rid of that box. Let me show you the Dow inverted fund that I like to use is S D O W is the, is the symbol. As you can see, most of these charts are going to look relatively the same. This one's a uh, just about as volatile as the SDS. We can see back in February when it gapped up into the 30s and then it topped out just under $100, right around $95. So that was a pretty good move on this inverted fund. We zoom in closer, we can see it looks just like the other two. Basically in a holding pattern right now as far as the inverted ETFs, as far as I'm concerned. Now we start getting into the more volatile ones. The SRTY is the ultra short Russell 2000 fund that I follow. And this one had massive moves in February. You can see it gapped up over 20 and didn't stop until it was over 60. And if we zoom in a little closer, it's pretty much making the same pattern stuck in that consolidation range back out and get to the tza as i'm going down this list they get more and more volatile but this is the direction small cap triple bear etf ticker symbol tza february it bounced into it bounced up into the 30s and didn't stop until it got to a high of almost 120. so if you were holding one of these to hedge your portfolio if you were lucky enough to be holding one of these to hedge your portfolio when the whole pandemic started, you made a decent amount of your money back. But if we zoom in a little closer, you can see this one is roughly the same pattern. And last but certainly not least is the UVXY. And this sucker moves. I usually don't mess around with this one unless the market is trending down. And I actually like to day trade this one on Fridays. I don't like to hold it overnight. But on Fridays around 2.30s, around 2.30 in the afternoon, Eastern Standard Time, I like to buy some of these calls or puts that are slightly out of the money because in down markets, the market tends to accelerate in the last hour. And it's almost, it's just pretty much a straight gamble. But if you buy one of these with about an hour and a half left in the day and it goes crazy your way in that last hour, you can make a lot of money on an option that's expiring that day. And a lot of times, you know, you'll you'll make five to ten times your money and you're only risking what you put in. So if you put in $100, you could potentially make $500 to $1,000 on that, but you're only risking that $100. This is one of the few things that I see that are still left in the market that you can basically gamble with on Friday and you know if you get it right two out of the four weeks in the month that can be very highly profitable for you but that is the strategy in a nutshell I apologize if I drug this video out too long but I think that these inverted ETFs might be in play so this could be a strategy that helps you guys out in the next couple of weeks or so all right, folks. Well, that's all I have for you today. Uh, please like the video if you got something out of it and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Uh, thank you so much for watching my video today. Till next time. Take care, everybody.